podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV. Life's trails are filled with surprises. The more interesting and memorable ones offer twists and turns to negotiate and steep summits to climb. Sometimes after you think you've found your footing at last. Do you want to hike in the rain? Is that what you're thinking? Boy, thank you again. Yes, sir. But it's the most challenging of life's trails that play forever in your mind. The ones that both frustrate and enliven your journey in undreamed of ways. Just ask Trevor Thomas. Yeah, 2004 was a good year for me. Got out of law school. I was going to go into the JAG Corps with the Navy. And the only thing I had to do was take a physical, which included an eye test. The news was shocking and came out of nowhere. She said, glasses are not going to help you. I can't help you. I would recommend highly that you go see a specialist. He said it could be central serous choreoid retinopathy. He said, but not at like anything I'd ever seen. 25% of my eyesight, one week, gone, just like that. And soon, probably gone entirely with no cure. I never met a blind person. I certainly didn't ever envision myself being blind. And God knows, I didn't know how to exist as a blind person. The first two, three years, as he was realizing that blindness had occurred, uh, one, we didn't know what to expect at all, and I'm not sure he knew what to expect, but it was, it was pretty harrowing. I did not want to leave my house. You know, I was at the point where I didn't even know how I was going to get to the mailbox without, without getting hurt. You know, in my eyes, you know, life, life was over. So then you got to figure out, am I going to curl up and die, or am I going to just, okay, what am I going to do? One friend called and said, you are going out, and we're going to go see a blind guy speak. The same problems that I had and I was going through, he'd already gone through. So I instantly could identify with him. It turned out to be a very, very monumental point in my life. Well, uh, he climbed Everest. If this guy can climb Everest and he's blind, why can't I do whatever it is that I want to do in life? It was like a catharsis. It really was. He realized at that moment that he could be a blind person that could do something other than sit on the sofa and do nothing. With the help of an Orient and mobility instructor, Trevor took those critical first steps. The first time was terrifying. She would make me go up and down the streets all around in the neighborhood. You push that comfort zone a little bit, then you push it again, and then again, and again. I've done so many miles hiking. I know by the speed that I'm walking and time, basically tell me how far I've gone, and how far I've gone will get me to markers and will let me know where I need to turn to go different places. Down the street, up the hill, turn right, then turn left, and walk down that street, and the minute we hit the Greenway, it was freedom. The Charlotte Greenway was Trevor's ticket to a future he couldn't have imagined at that time. There's not a day that I don't go out and hit the Greenway for either training, enjoyment, or for transportation. Trevor's home away from home often meant 20 to 25 miles a day of disciplined effort. He had to find something that worked for him, and the hiking is what, you know, what was the answer. But not just any hike. Trevor decided to take on the big one, the Appalachian Trail, end to end, all 2,175 miles of it, from Georgia to Maine, through 14 states. I do think my parents wanted to have me committed. And I said, you didn't join the Boy Scouts. You didn't, <laughs> you never camped, you never, never did any of that. Yeah, I thought he lost his mind and his eyesight all in the same pipe, yep. Once I decided I was gonna do it, there was gonna be no way on earth that, number one, I wouldn't go, and number two, that I would quit. We still didn't really think he was going to go. A through hike of the entire trail typically takes five to seven months. 
It's best to start in Georgia in the spring and walk north to Maine, following the warm weather up the spine of the Appalachians. When it became real that I was gonna go, my sister was the only one who would take me. And I watched him as he went and I thought, okay, Trev, this is your one and only chance to show that you can do this. Part of me was like, you know what? As much gumption as he had, yeah, he, he could do it. But then the other part of me was thinking, oh my gosh, you know, if I just sent him off in the sunset to come home in a pine box. D-Day was April 6, 2008. And the way Trevor figured it, it would work to ask other hikers if they would trust having a blind guy tag after them. The first 24 groups of people that I asked, absolutely not. Most people did not want to be responsible for getting the blind guy killed. Finally, a hiker named Kevin took up his challenge, and they were off, much like you see Trevor here following his friend Dave. But like any new venture, there were some learning experiences. The AT is a very rugged trail. It was nowhere close to the Greenway, which is where I got all my practice. We had to figure out a way for me not to get killed. We figured out that if he tapped on rocks, all right, rocks to your left, then I would know they were there. We got better and better and better. Now we have a little blowdown, but it's notched out. All right. I got quicker and quicker and quicker and hence started falling less and less and less. All right, watch the uh, rotors on high right, level. It is not true that when you lose one of your senses, your other senses get better. All right, first step. They don't. Right. Go right, a little wobbly. You become more aware and you pay attention to your other senses more. My sense of touch, I'm a very tactile person now. I have noticed that the feeling, ironically enough, in my feet has become much more acute. But I need to be able to feel the subtle gradient on a trail to make sure that I'm on it. Inevitably, Trevor and his first hiking partner had to part company. We made it seven days before he had to leave and go on. I figured I'd just stop and I'd sit down and I'd wait. The great thing about the AT is that there are thousands of people that do it every year. So you meet a lot of people along the way. And Trevor was fortunate to find fresh hiking partners willing to take him on. And they said, come with us. And it went on and on like that. Groups would form, people would get off. In the beginning, trusting others to help him along life's way was difficult. We got some yeah. steps here. All right. On and off the trail. Step up, right. and then go left. He always had the position that it was trust no one, except for family members. And the most ironic thing is now with his blindness, he's got to trust people. He's got to trust total strangers. And that's been a turning point for him because he's never been like that. And now he trusts a lot of people, which has made a big difference in his life. It's common for hikers to take on a trail name, an easy way to personalize your trek and to remember others you meet along the way. On the trail, Trevor is known as Zero, after Zero Zero, a rock climbing term for zero visibility. All right, Butterfly, let's roll. I heard about the blind guy on the trail, and it was really funny because I got to a shelter and I heard somebody, and it was Zero. He'd been there for like a day and a half, waiting for somebody he knew to come along. Switchback coming up. Well, we Switch hiked back. together for three yeah, okay. and a half days. You know, he's got the hiking poles, and everybody else has hiking poles as well. So it's like he doesn't feel any different, and people can't tell he's blind. And he'll tell me sometimes he just feels like this is his element out here. The trail has over 250 shelters and campsites. Shelters are spaced about a day's hike apart. Zero's daily objective was simple, reach a trail shelter every night. Sounds like good flow. And find water. And if things worked out well, on the days he really needed one, Zero would find a new hiking partner and let family know where he was via a GPS spot locator. Anybody who's ever been hiking in unfamiliar territory, even for an afternoon, can recall the heart-pounding feeling that can come with being alone in the wilderness. It's one thing to be alone and a little bit freaked out in the back country when you're by yourself in the daytime. But when it turns to night and you're by yourself, 
is very, very unnerving. You sit and you wait for the day to come. I mean, you're just praying for, when am I going to feel that light on my face? All right, we're coming down. The sun's feeling good. This is a shot that I need for my camera. With the dew on trees. Yeah? What about it? Oh, it's the sun shoot through. And all that dew that we had last night. That's so it's like sparkly? Like a Christmas tree. Nice. This is a story of a man transformed. Who has learned to step out of self and in turn inspire others. The amazing thing was is that I was doing the AT for myself. Wow, it's so nice to meet you. Oh, good to meet Just you. Just the the vast number of people that came up to me and said, what you're doing is amazing. And they're like, no, you inspire me. My name is Zero. Um, oh, you're the blind guy. Yeah, that's me. I've heard of you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> so, I'm uh, really impressed. Knowing that by me walking was inspiring people to do things was just really cool. And I was like, wow, maybe I can make a difference doing this. And he kept going and going and going, and I thought, I'll be darned, my brother's going to do this. I can't believe it. There's hiking, and then there's the grueling 100-mile wilderness, from Munson, Maine to Mount Katahdin, the last leg of the Appalachian Trail. And they even have this gigantic sign before you enter that says, if you do not have at least 10 days of food on you, don't enter, because there is no out. And then there was Kyle the remnants of a late season hurricane that brought enough weather misery to nearly get the best of him. I'd almost drowned myself. I was freezing and I was in a shelter and I was alone. The only thing that saved me was I heard people. They hiked pretty much all night so they could catch up with me and make sure that I was able to complete my trek. But they had not yet reached their ultimate goal, Mount Katahdin, because the National Park Service had closed the trail, sidelining hikers for a week. When the weather finally broke, Zero headed out toward his goal and had plenty of company. There were more hikers on that day, October 8th, that stood on top of that mountain than has ever stood on top of the mountain, ever. All these people are making as much noise as they possibly can because they're excited, and number two, because they know I'm listening so I can get up the rest of the hill. Just being able to share that with so many people that you shared so much with, it was utterly surreal. Six months two days and over 2,000 miles, Zero had beat the odds, his own. I'm not encouraging everybody who's losing their sight to run okay. out and do the Appalachian Trail. That was something that I chose to do for myself. What I want people to take away from it, sure, there are gonna be things you can't do any longer, so let them go. Find what it is that is your passion, whether you think you can do it or not, and just go out and try. Everybody has their own summit. Hey, Dave, say something else. People take photographs. Well, I have those. Say something again. But they don't do me any good. Every time I get to the summit of anything, I pick up a rock or two rocks and put them in my pocket. That way, when I get home, I can lay my rocks out, and I can feel the rocks. I remember, just like if you, say, would look at a photo. I just navigated 2,175 miles. I'm out there doing things that 99% of the population wouldn't even consider doing. What to most people would seem to be the mundane is a great deal of challenge for me. Being alone and going to the grocery store. I'm Trevor. I'm Carol. Good to meet you. Good to meet you too. I need to do a little shopping. I'm sorry. Oh, no worries. I can't see the boxes. And it's a good one? Yes, I can't okay. see the can. That's good. Great. It's a reality check. And that's going to do it for produce, but thank you very much. You're welcome. One thing that was most detrimental to me, and I listened to it for a while, as my vision grew worse, there was the increased 
societal expectations on me being able to do less and less. I gained weight on the trail last time. You were kind of, you were skinny. You were really skinny, I thought. I realized that, no, I can do whatever I want to because I know I can. What's in the future? I'm doing a lot more hiking. Okay. Podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV.